singles out Hindus, professors sue over anti-caste discrimination policy. So this is a continuation of a story we've been following on Atheist Republic for a long time. So I will give the summary of this latest update and then give the overall summary of the issue we're talking about. So in California, two Hindu professors, Sunil Kumar and Praveen Siha, were, are suing the California State or CSU, Cal, excuse me, California State University, also known as CSU system, over the plan to enact an anti-caste discrimination policy that they allege is itself discriminatory. The, law, the lawsuit plans to prevent CSU from implementing an interim policy that elevates caste identity into a protected class. According to Kumar, this policy, quote, singles out all Indian origin and Hindu staff members and students. He added, quote, this is by its very definition, discrimination and a denial of our basic civil rights. Sinha said, quote, there are other generally applicable and neutral categories already protect already protected under CSU's non-discrimination policy that can be used to address incidents of alleged caste discrimination. CSU argued that the policy would help combat caste-based discrimination. However, Kumar and Sinha claimed that the policy would formalize the caste system in CSU's policies. They argued that CSU would forcibly assign a caste to an individual to enforce anti-discrimination policies. Quote, how else will CSU be able to determine if discrimination based on caste occurred unless they ascribe a caste not only to the allegedly discriminating actor, but to the alleged victim as well, Kumar and Sinha argued. So let me do an overview. Let's do a big picture for a moment. So a few months ago, we came and it talked about the story where the California State University system, which is a collective of about 10 public universities in the state of California, added caste as a protected group in their anti-discrimination policies. So the same way that, uh, you know, it, their policies that prevent discrimination on the basis of race, creed, sexual orientation, sex, gender presentation, all of these things, you know, that standard list, caste would be added to that list as well. And so this affects a large population of students and faculty within California. And like I said, this is a public university system. So this is the government's university system, one of many. And so this is in many ways a constitutional question. And it is a very important precedent because it is a public university system and one of the largest in the nation. So these two Hindu professors within this system are coming forward and they're also being represented in part by the Hindu American Foundation, which is an organization that we have a lot of disagreements with, and we've talked about them a lot before, because they come out a lot against policies that are supposed to protect people on the basis of caste. And they're basically coming out and saying they have many contentions that are part of this lawsuit. But one of the main contentions is that they argue that it is unconstitutional and a violation of civil rights that in these policies that are put forward by a publicly funded body are actually defining what Hinduism is and in saying that casteism is a part of their faith. So they have a problem with a body that represents part of the state making a definition and categorization and assertion about their faith. They say that this among other things is kind of like a violation of, um, you know, the first amendment. And this is very similar to the Hindu American foundation, which is representing these professors. A few weeks ago, we talked about how the Hindu American foundation is suing the state of California itself because in a completely different matter where there's a Cisco employee that put forward one of the first lawsuits on the basis of caste discrimination, 
who is being represented by the California Department of Fair Employment. In that lawsuit, they are saying that that in California's effort to protect this worker who was Dalit or untouchable on the basis of his caste discrimination, um, on the basis of his caste, in the efforts that the state is putting forward in that case, that again, they are defining what Hinduism is and defining that casteism is a part of Hinduism and that this it is inappropriate for the state to be engaged in making definitions and assertions about what someone's faith is. So they're making a similar argument in this case in CSU. And then they're also contending within the, within the instance of what we're dealing with at CSU, they're also contending that if this policy was put in place, it is actually singling out people that are Indian and Hindu in particular, or South Asian in general, for special monitoring of caste bias. So they're saying you we are being subjected to disproportionate um yeah, monitoring, like we're being specially observed for extra racism, and this itself is discrimination. So these are some of the overall arguments that are going on in this lawsuit. I wasn't able to actually find a copy of the lawsuit, which usually I am able to, and I was able to read um, Hindu American Foundation's lawsuit against the state of California. So I know what a lot of their arguments are like because they're making similar arguments here. Um, but Armin, what is your reaction to everything that I just outlined? I think there it's bullshit. What they're saying is bullshit. Um, first of all, um, if you already have existing laws that cover something, that doesn't mean that you cannot come up with specific laws about something that is important, specifying it and highlighting it. We do that all the time. We have over, you know, all encompassing laws, but there's special cases where you add a law to protect a certain group of people or even not, not even about protection to do something more specifically with and highlighting it, even though there's another law that in practice, it should be covering it. But this law makes it more possible, gives it more structure, gives it more highlight. So just because there's another law exists that covers it, that doesn't mean another law is not useful. OK, we have that, a lot of examples of that. Right. Another thing is that this idea of them uh, defining Hinduism, um, governments defining what religions are, is not only, it, they do it all the time, they have to do it. And because if you, for example, any government that pretends to be secular or that claims to be secular, they have to know what religion is, they have to define what, where Islam starts and when does it end? When Hinduism starts and when does it end? When Christianity starts or when does it end? If you don't define it, how are you going to know whether it has entered the government or not if you don't know where the lines are? So governments deciding what religion is is, is part of what, I, what they do and what they're supposed to do. So that's nonsense as well. Um, the idea of this would require special monitoring of Hindus. I mean... I mean, what are you talking about? So we cannot acknowledge that Christianity, like within Christian communities, anti-LGBT stuff is common, or within Muslim communities, anti-LGBT stuff is common. So the government has to uh, turn a, not acknowledge that, turn a blind eye to actual reports and actual reality, because all of a sudden Christians and Muslims would be called out. Like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe they should be. Maybe the reason they're not being specially monitored, maybe they're being called out more often because these forms of bigotry exist within their community. So maybe if you're being called out, maybe it's because you're calling yourself out. Maybe it's because there is more of that type of bigotry within your community and the, the government is just acknowledging facts. You want to say something about this? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of pushback because the government, and this is, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think about this, how they would think about this, or I'm not going how they might think about this. Let me be clear. You're saying, okay, but these things exist within these communities. That's a very different claim than making assertions about what is making theological assertions, which is what they have a contention with here, essentially. It's even... 
Go ahead. Every definition of a religion would be a theological claim. If you say we recognize as Islam to be this, technically you're making a claim about the meaning of Islam, the definition of Islam. That would be a this, I don't claim. think the state should be involved in that in any way whatsoever. Then it's a state that does not do that cannot be secular. Because if you don't define where Islam starts and when does it end, then you cannot detect when has it entered the government. The state has to define a religion for it to know, because if you don't define it, then what, when Islam enters the government, you can be like, well, we don't know if Islam has entered the government because we haven't defined Islam. <laughs> How are you going to know when religion has entered your government if you haven't even defined it? If you if you have if you have don't recognize what Christianity is or what Hinduism is, I think it depends. Like you part of the problem that we deal with is the fact about. that, like, with the status of how religious nonprofits are recognized as nonprofits within America, it's essentially meant that the IRS becomes a theological body. That's a huge problem. Yes, I understand that's a problem, but this is a different problem. This is a different thing. Just because that's a problem, that doesn't mean the government cannot officially recognize what's Islam and what's Christianity and what's Hinduism. They have no choice. They have no choice. They have to come up with a better line of where this religion starts and when it ends. Like, <laughs> what if tomorrow you make a claim in the government and I, and it's not religious and I claim Susanna, just like you're a Senator. And I'm like, what Susanna said was an Islamic claim. So she cannot say that because she's part of a government. And you're like, I didn't say anything that is Islamic. How are we to determine if what you said is, has broken the barriers between church and state? <laughs> How are we going to determine what Susanna has said has broke those barriers if we want to keep it secular? So we have to recognize what's Islam and what's not Islam. Well, I mean, one that doesn't unfortunately apply that much in America because, like, senators be citing religious no, no, stuff I'm, constantly talking, all the time. I'm they sign their laws is. in literal Susanna, churches missing, as they're removing abortion. Like, <laughs> you're, missing my, you're missing my point. This is not about America. I'm talking about a hypothetical country that is supposed to be secular. Any hypothetical country. Anyways, we're getting off track. Um, my I know, last but I point. can also see the way that you're talking about it becoming a huge problem because then you can be painting something like as Islamism that genuinely isn't Islamism. That's actually in favor of my point, what you're saying. So we have to understand what that is. We have to come up with like so that nobody can make accusations like that. And the government can do this pretty reliably using objective scholars. But this is an entire field. Like the government doesn't have to rely, we don't have to rely on the government. This could be, um, just have experts come and tell you. Experts from ac academia. But I really like, don't like your approach to this situation missing... because it's it's reminding me too much of basically the foundation of customary law in India, which is a nightmare in, it, in which they bring forward people in front of the Supreme Court to decide what is and is not Islamic law or Hindu law on the basis of scripture and they're talking about like you know the basis of hijab as according to the quran in court like that's totally inappropriate to me Do you, you're missing what i'm saying okay what you're describing is using religion this making religious arguments for passing laws make me making religious arguments in favor and against laws what i'm describing is exactly to avoid that Okay, what you're saying, the thing that you don't like, if we want to avoid that, we have to decide what is religion so it can't be used like that. If you want to avoid what you just described, how am I to turn how am I to know what you're using as a way to pass a law is religion so I could stop it from being used like that? I have to know, I have to define religion so I could be like, hey, you can okay, let's say you have a senator making religious arguments in the Senate, okay. I like okay no you can't make those arguments in the senate about the law like okay what arguments can i make like religion i like what if you say like well these are not religious arguments so i have to have a definition we have to have a standardized legal definition for what's a religion so i could stop you from doing what you just described 
According to who? According to what theologian and according to whose authority did we determine that they are legitimate enough to decide what is and is not a religious argument? That's okay. very sketchy and questionable to me. Of course, of course. I appeal, I say the government should appeal not to religious bodies because that would be anti-secular, but to objective scholars, academia. You don't go to the mosque and ask what's in Islam, you go to academia. That's extremely fraught. That's extremely fraught. Okay. This sounds well, like Ibrahim Kendi's we're... Department of Anti-Racism, where they bring in acad academic elite to come and decide what is and is not anti-racism. We're missing, we're getting really off track here. Body. We're getting really off track, okay? What I'm describing, if you could, you're, you could find examples of it going wrong, and I, Kendi is not an expert, okay? That's not an actual expert, okay? But People think he is. You're really going off track here, Susanna, because I need to get back to the story. Okay, what I'm describing, you cannot avoid. If you like, I, there's no way to be a secular country without knowing what religion is. If you can find a way, okay, like let's say you have a problem. What I'm saying, okay, great. Tell me how you can say say the, understand when secular, the barriers of secularism has been breached without defining what religion is. Like, give me, give me, give me your method then. Sorry, I'm not, I'm taking you seriously. I just started laughing because Joe is saying, and here I am with no popcorn. Okay, but do you have an answer for my question? You literally, if you have a way to keep a country secular without understanding what the hell is religion, then let me, what, let me know what your method is. No, do you have a model? For this, that exists within history currently, because yeah, in it, every the, secular your country construction of it just is. Oh my god! Like in Go okay, in okay. Let me ask you a question, okay? Who decided in France that the hijab is part of Islam? For them to make it not allowed in public schools, because Muslims themselves don't agree on this, okay? But somebody in France's in French government decided that. Hijab is something Islamic. How did they decide that? I don't actually know, but the law isn't against hijab in specific. It's against religious symbols in children's education in general. That confirms what I'm saying. At yeah, I'm just point, clarifying for people. Yeah, so they decided that this hijab is part of a religion, namely Islam. So... Their government, based on their standards, the hijab is part of Islam. So they have made a decision on that. That's why you can't have that in schools, public schools. Mm -hmm. That's the official stance of the French government. Mm -hmm. There you go. So they have made decisions officially by the government in France, the most secular country in the world. They have defined one thing about Islam, at least. At least one thing. I okay, would have to look more at how they technically defined that. Okay. Well, can I make my last point about this whole, the, about the actual news item that we covered? Yes. Okay. Um, the, the last point that they're making about how um, they have to define something, like they have to define the caste. Okay. Um, it seems like they're saying that they're, giving it legitimacy by identifying it. That's what they're saying, which is also nonsensical because what you're identifying is the target. When some other people have used some metrics to target you, you recognizing the fact that they're being a target doesn't mean that you're legitimizing it. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Well, in terms of this whole, like, the government defining what is and is not in religion, all, all this stuff, like, this is a really complex legal question that I'm just not familiar enough to be able to say specifically in this context, like, does this violate the precedents that we see within America and California in particular? Like, this is this is a really tough question, right? So I'm just approaching it from the sense of, like, maybe 
they do have a legitimate legal argument, whether or not I like some of their intentions behind this, because I don't like the Hindu American Foundation. I don't like a lot of their agendas, right? But I really try to be as objective as possible. And then like technically on a technicality or on a legality, they might have a point. And yeah. I can recognize that, but I'm also not legally educated enough in these very detailed specifics to be able to come to my audience or our audience and say, oh, it's definitely this way. It's definitely that way. So really, I'm just like sitting here thinking and chewing out over these things out loud. Right. And then there's the other questions of that are involved with this caste discrimination policy in the question of special monitoring. And I have friends who are within Atheist Republic who've come to me and they're like, there's no question that I'm completely disgusted by casteism, but I'm South Asian and I'm concerned about if some of my family members could be particularly targeted by this, especially considering the fact that caste hierarchy is very specifically, it's, it's, it's very geo, it's, what's the word I'm looking for? Geographically specific, right? So someone who is upper caste in one area, in a different area, what they experience and perceive might not actually be that of an upper caste social position, right? So then in, in an American context of someone who might not be familiar with any of these systems coming in and making a judgment about an interaction between two people might make a full stop categorization of, oh, this is an upper caste person belittling a, a lower caste person when that quote unquote upper caste person's experience within their geographical specificity is actually not that of an upper caste person because it varies on state to state, country to country. Like, this isn't only about India. This is about Nepal. This is about Bangladesh. This is about Pakistan. This is about all of South Asia, right? So I, I think it's important to talk about these things. Like, the, yeah, there are people who have legitimate concerns about this, especially in terms, in, in, in the ways in which they don't feel like things are properly defined, literally within the policy itself. All right, let me make these points with that, you know, because I know you might get, you might get angry. Um, first of all, I do think that these people are hiding behind technicalities. I think so as well. That, yeah, and their actual agenda is we don't we want we don't want to be called out for being bigots, okay, and we want our right to be to discriminate okay and just like christians have like why are you taking my freedom to a bigotry like that's basically what the christians do when you challenge them i think this is along those lines right why are you challenging our rights to bigotry um with regards to the some concerns that some people, some innocent people might be a target. That's true about every policy. And I, that's, that's good to be concerned about, but, and is, but that concern should make us push for executing it right, not to get rid of those laws. Anti-discrimination law. Yeah. Anti-discrimination laws are good. If people are like, Oh, but this could happen. Well, let's, Make try to make sure that that doesn't happen. Let's try to make that happen less. But if you say like, "Oh, this bad thing could happen," that should not conclude you come to the con with the conclusion of uh, then let's get this rid of this anti-discrimination policy or this anti-discrimination law. Okay, so yeah, be more careful with execution, but don't get rid of it. These are good things. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so you yeah, agree with this? Um, we do have a lot of comments. I want to uh, that I start. So yeah. should we get to that? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Friendly Hindu is saying they can bring caste discrimination law without defining Hinduism. They are only doing it with Hinduism. Again, I need to find the actual verbiage of CSU's policy because I'm not sure to what extent it is only 
talking about Hinduism. I believe I've seen p reporting on the verbiage of the policy that references South Asia in general. I think there is some acknowledgement that it goes beyond Hinduism, although I could be wrong. Um, okay. They, I think my understanding is that they're not claiming it's only Hinduism. Okay. There are, there's an understanding, which is a factual understanding that casteism exists within Hinduism. Okay? Originates and, from. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it exists independently from other cultures as well, like independent from Hinduism. Okay. But Hindu, it's a, this is even putting it mightily, okay? Because if I was, the, I mean, if I would describe it, I would be the, that this is the only thing that is fundamental about Hinduism. Everything else is wishy-washy. Hey, yo. <laughs> Nothing else about Hinduism is agreed upon as foundational to Hinduism, except that the fact that the, the Vedas have something to do with it, which parts nobody, nobody has, is like certain about, okay? Um... And the fact that the caste system is a foundational and a fundamental part of Hinduism. There's nothing else. Okay. Everything else is like, who says like Hinduism? Like you see it here. Is it Hinduism? Is it not Hinduism? Nobody knows. Okay. And people disagree. Okay. Um, so, so, but the, that acknowledgement of that, if you don't have that there, like that is like wokeism. Okay. You guys, I know like a lot of Hindus complain about wokeism, but this would be wokeism. Tonight, you know, if this was Islam, about something Islamic, and they were like, oh, there's this weird, like, problem within society coming out of some people, like, but we don't know who, like, we're not going to mention it. You guys are going to be like, It ah, just so happens to all be consistently Islamic by coincidence. No, 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 we don't know. No, don't mention Islam. That would be bigotry. Oh, my God, Susie, Cow, why did you mention Islam? Like, if this was, if this was about, like, oh, let me, hmm. Well, um, honor killing. If this was a report and an attack and a law on honor killing, and in this, in all of these discussions and reports, they didn't mention Islam once. The Hindus that are calling this out, they would be like, "Oh my God, you 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 guys are cowards! You cannot even mention Islam. This is wokeism to the max." So like you would be like pulling your hair out. But now. Because they mention Hinduism, rightfully so, you're talking about casteism and you don't want to mention Hinduism. Are you serious? You want to talk about casteism without any reference to Hinduism? You Hindus, the ones who are saying this, you gone woke. This is Hindu woke. This is Hindu wokeism. Okay? All right. And I, I've read the Hindu Americans Foundation against, lawsuit against the state of California. And in that lawsuit, HAF blames, they try to blame casteism on the British. It's like complete yeah. historical revisionism. I mean, I understand that others, okay, so first of all, either we do have other societies that came up with caste independently from Hindus, okay? But some of them are also classes, not necessarily caste, okay? Because classes, caste is a class that you cannot get yourself out of, <laughs> like it's by birth. So sometimes a lot of people from India are like, oh, they have caste, they have caste. I'm like, those are class structures. Those are not caste structures. Caste structure is something you're born, it's, your, it's tied to your blood and you're like, you cannot like work your, there's not, the, anyways. But even with that definition, casteism is not exclusive to Hinduism. But it's a big part of it, okay? Like you guys have not necessarily monopolized that market, but you're, but you're there's something next to that. You have almost monopolized that market, okay? You have almost monopolized the caste market. But anyways, um, you want to read this one? Okay, I don't understand what oxymoron is getting at. So he's saying they asked students to identify with their caste so monitoring is made possible. When did they do this? Who did this? Then they have stuff like being vegetarian, celebrating festivals could imply casteism based on research. I think oxymoron is making an allusion to a study done by Equality Labs, which is a nonprofit in the United States de dedicated to essentially like Dalit liberation. And that study 
did influence a lot of this policy and other and other anti-caste discrimination policies that are being implemented in the U.S. And I need to look into the methodology of it a bit more, but I people have told me that there are problems with the construction of this survey. And in general, surveys and questionnaires are like the lowest form of data. So this is such I, a slippery slope, okay? Like you guys are wearing like, oh, you're a vegetarian. Like ban this guy for casteism. Like, are you seriously such so a like okay? My I'm I'm my the enforcement of vegetarianism is involved in the perpetuation no. of casteism. Yeah, but that does happen. My point, okay, that's sorry. not my point. My point is that I will start taking you seriously, okay? When somebody is accused of cast casteism wrongfully, okay? And that is very likely to eventually happen. When you have anti-discrimination laws, somebody is going to get wrongfully accused and we will call out that incident. These are not good arguments. These slippery slopes are not good arguments for not having anti castus policies. Um, here's another one. Oxymoron is saying, how is this not similar to love jihad laws? I asked how you to clarify what you meant in the live chat. I literally don't understand what the comparison even is. Okay, I will explain that to you when you explain to me how is it not similar to traffic laws, okay? You explain it to me. How is it not similar to traffic laws? And you, okay. What do you mean? Love jihad? Are you serious? I right don't now? understand. I don't understand <laughs> the comparison. What's the relation? Oh my God. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, um, friendly Hindus is saying Varna is castus, but we can't attribute the entire caste system in the subcontinent to the four Varnas. It's not just I didn't Varna, do that. It? Okay. No, no. This is, this, this is accurate. This comment is accurate and it's coming from a friendly Hindu. Okay. See, I'm not saying it. A Hindu with a Hindu uh, profile pic. So this guy is seriously Hindu. You see that? Seriously Hindu is saying exactly what I have been saying. Varna is castus. Varna is the fundamental part of Hinduism and is castus. But it's not exclusive to Hinduism. I agree. It come, we have other places, other ideologies that are castes that have that haven't got their casteism from Hinduism. They became castes independently. I've acknowledged that. Okay, so thank you for confirming this. Okay. Um, D is saying this is getting lost in the weeds. Anti discrimination laws are a good thing, or anti discrimination or policies are a good policies. thing. I completely agree, D. I just think that like there are some legitimate questions to be had and there are some understandings of what is the legal framework for these things that like i have questions about um and i completely agree with armin that doesn't mean that we should throw them out the window at all unlike what other people are advocating for we should make sure that they're better um <laughs> Numan is really liking your uh, new term of hindu wokeism <laughs> and uh Mogambo is saying, Susanna, where did you get this right-wing propaganda argument about one caste being lower in one state being higher in another? No one talking about this. It seems like a recent fabrication of the IT cell. No, this is literally a historical fact. Some like scheduled tribes or scheduled castes are not as oppressed or not seen as higher or as high on the hierarchy in some places than they are in others. Like I was speaking to a friend of mine that comes from a Bangladeshi Hindu background. And in Bangladesh, their hierarchy is different than it is in other areas. So in Bangladesh, his caste is not seen as highly as it would be in another area, in a different area of India. Like there's a huge amount of geographical variety when it comes to caste and Varna, Jati, whatever you want to call it. Okay, but the variety is not, is subcast. You know what I mean? Like it's not like a, a Shudra is like upper class somewhere else. Oh, yes, that's a, you're right. That's a very important <laughs> clarification. So, Thank you, Armin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's not like if you're a part of the you know lowest caste, like the Shudra, all of a sudden you move to north of India and like, ah, oh, I'm upper class here. So it's not like, it's not that mobile. It's like within a cast, there are subcasts and those slights up and goes up and down slightly within those casts. But if you're lower caste, 
your lower, according to Hindu dogma, your lower caste everywhere, even outside of India, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, even if you leave your religion, <laughs> even, if, even this, if you become a this Muslim. This is historically true. This is geographically true. And it's also true in contemporary Indian law because what the law considers as a scheduled tribe or scheduled caste has changed over the years. Like Modi, Prime Minister Modi's caste was more relatively, I'm not saying like last year, but relatively more recently updated to be scheduled tribe, meaning you get special reservations and things from the government, then scheduled caste, I meant. It was, it was more recently updated to be included within that. So these things do change and adjust over time, like any construction of a social group changes and adjusts over time. Like Irish people in America weren't always considered white, you know? Um, I don't know. I hope I made myself clear. Actually, that's a very good point. That's a very good point in my favor as well. Because the fact that Irish people were not considered white at some point, and now they're considered white, okay, shows that the concept of race and what is also up in the air, right? It's not, it's a social construct. Like, you know what I mean? Like, because what is like Irish are white and now they're not white, right? And for example, a man like Barack Obama who is, has a white mother because of the color of skin is considered fully black. Like they consider him a black man, even though it's like, wait a minute, like you're half white, half black, but like, no, like we decide based on arbitrary features that you are a black man. So these are vague arbitrary lines of what, what is what race is. But that doesn't mean that we don't understand what racists are, right? You, so basically the, these people are arguing that, oh, you, you are validating the definition of caste because you're acknowledging these people are victims. I'm like, no, like in the same way that we acknowledge racists are racist. For example, we have anti-black racists, even though we know that the whole definition of who's black is like not scientifically, it's not a scientific term. It's a social construct. So just because it's a social construct, like we understand that people worship God. Like we, have, we, we believe like Allah, Muslims worship Allah. Like do we, does acknowledging that make Allah real? No. Okay. So acknowledging facts about people does not validate what they are, their beliefs. Yeah. One final thing before we move on to the next segment, I want to make a very important, very important correction. My apologies. Friendly Hindu is correcting me saying Modi is otherwise backward cast, not scheduled cast or scheduled tribes. Okay. This is a distinction in the Indian government between like the amount of programs available from people of different castes and backgrounds and so forth. I, I confused the systems, my apologies, but this is actually a genuinely important correction. So thank you for correcting me. Um, How could Modi be the 10th avatar of Vishnu if he's, if he's not even a warrior class or a Brahmin? Is that Vishnu? What's that Vishnu? Yeah. Like, yeah. How does that work? He can't be the 10th avatar of Vishnu. Well, you know, that there are like extremists in Dutva that actually don't like Modi because he's otherwise backward cast. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. But the one the see Hinduism has no, it's just like all over the place because there's a lot of Hindus who think he's the 10th avatar of Vishnu, but that doesn't, yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Your religion is all over the place. Just, it's a mess. The whole thing is a mess. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, Oh, Aksimaran is actually a Shudra. Look, Aksimaran is saying, I am Shudra, and we are a very, very dominant caste. Uh, like, my great-grandfather had silver coins. Uh, what? Silver coins? What? Cut down. What is that? that sounds like Stockholm Syndrome. Is, it my... is that like a Stockholm Syndrome case? Mm -hmm. uh, like a... No. Okay. Because no. like, it, this is kind of like saying, what, are you saying that the Shudras are not, have, do not have issues because of your example? This is kind of like saying there's no racism in the United States because Barack Obama was president. Does that have those vibes to you? Like, oh, there's uh, no racism. Depends. Black, well, and black people dominant, don't have it bad in America. Yeah. Dominant, you could just mean by population because it is true that on the percentage of population, people of lower caste va vastly are a larger proportion of the Indian population than upper caste. 
So they're dominant in that sense. No, but he's saying like we're dominant and we have coins. We have like we were rich. So I think he's like saying there's he's kind of dismissing how big of a deal casteism is just because of his family experience. This is I mean people if that's say what you're I'm like, oh I know a Dalit that owns a car. Like what? yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, or like for, for people for our Western audience, it sounds like their black people have it great in the United States because of Obama or Kanye. Like Kanye West sort of like, oh like look, they must have them must Where's racism? Like, look at these people. And also, this comment got us a super chat because Varun is saying, now I believe I oxymoron by his name. Yeah, okay. That's the jab at oxymoron. Um, thank you for the super chat, Varun. <laughs> thank, you for, thank you for the super chat. Varun gave us a $5 super chat. Thank you, Varun. He's saying there is no dominant Dalit. They might be dominant in their village of Dalits, but when compared to inter-village caste Hindus, they're not dominant. This is in response to oxymoron point that he's a okay. Dalit and he's like dominant. No, he's a Shudra. I'm sorry, he's a, sh uh, what did I say? Dalit. Okay, sorry, Shudra. Why did I say Dalit? Um, and he's dominant, yeah. Okay, but so Varun's comment is does not addressing oxymoron because oxymoron doesn't say he's do dominant Dalit. He says he's dominant Shudra. Well, and also I feel like there's dominant? something lost in translation here because we can mean dominant in many different ways dominate in what sense that's what's missing yeah, and, here and you don't want to be dominant unless you're talking about bedroom stuff because hey, dominant hey, is, now <laughs> yeah you're like well, oxymoron is like we're we're i'm shudra we're dominant like dominant means like somebody else is like suffering at your expense like you're above somebody okay and again that's even not necessarily you can talk about dominant just literally in terms of percentages who is the larger group that's the more dominant group um, predominant okay. I, predominant but the more given, predominant group no but that's given what he said after i think what he meant what i said i agree maybe maybe yeah maybe he just thinks that the shudra there's a white there's a there's a kink oh, no. that a lot of shudra oh no <laughs> Maybe before Shudra's... you even finished your sentence, I was like, "Oh no, where is this?" <laughs> Maybe Shudras share a lot more than just their cast. Maybe there's a, they they just like to be dominant in the bedroom. Maybe they're doms. Are Shudras doms? Oh my! Wait, if Shudras are doms and Brahmins are <laughs> subs, maybe we could end the caste system by acknowledging that there's something, there's a complementary. <laughs> desires that they have like they could like serve each other I, mean, <laughs> I don't know just thinking out I'm just providing solutions I'm just providing solutions uh, nobody has tried it's been it's been thousands of years Susie and it, this issue hasn't been fixed yet so I'm just trying out new ideas like you don't know if this is not going to solve it. Do you know if this is not going to solve it? We have out. Of, we are out of ideas. You might as well. I love Armin's creative solutions. They're always um, unexpected, to say the least. <laughs> All right. Oh my God! Oh, Great, yeah, saying world oh. peace by BDS. <laughs> <laughs> You're so uh, deranged. I, <laughs> there are some other things I want to say. I think it would get our channel banned. Um, Varun is saying, if Dalits and Shudras were dominant, had political power, we would have no problem to solve in India in a traditional Hindu society. Um, yeah, the world will, yeah, India, I mean, there will be some problems, but there will be a lot of problems, but it would be a lot better problem. Yep. Okay. Thank okay, you for cool. another super chat, Varun. Thank you. Yeah, you've been very generous for this, Varun. Like, that's a lot of super chats today. Thank you. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese god, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.